keyboard warriors unite. Yeah, this is definitely one of those topics where pretty much everybody has an opinion on it. Uh, so what I'm doing today, I'm gonna do a heat cycle. And you know what, man? Let's just get this thing fired up. Why'd I just get shocked? Well, I just learned the hard way that the Pro Design kill tether needs to be wired a certain way. So essentially the way this kill tether works is when you pull this, you're grounding the machine and that kills the engine. So essentially there are two wires that come out of this. No matter which way you run it, it will work. But this exposed metal portion over here, uh, I just discovered the hard way. If you touch this thing, uh, it'll zap you. So if it's, if, it's, if it's wired backwards. So I just switched the terminals down here at my connector and uh, now it does not shock you. So that's a fun fact. <laughs> so I hopped on some forums and uh, there's a whole bunch of people that just said that's a characteristic of it. That's not true, man. You gotta just switch the wires and it won't shock you. Yeah, so heat cycles. Um, I'm like semi doing heat cycles with this and uh, I, the only reason I'm making, I wasn't even gonna make a video about this because this is definitely one of those keyboard warrior topics where if you ask this question to 10 different people, you'll probably get 10 different answers. It's like, uh, you know, asking what kind of oil you should run in your motor. It's just one of those topics, but I get a lot of DMs, especially right now, cause I just finished the motor and whatnot. People are asking me what my break-in procedure is. And uh, so yeah, I'll just tell you what I do. And um, before I even made this video, I asked a couple people, uh, some of my subscribers that I know are familiar with motors. And I also uh, got some feedback from, you know, of course the forums and whatnot. And, and like I said, it's just, it's crazy. It's like a freaking shooting gallery, man. These people, uh, some people just get so mad when you tell them how you break in your motor. They tell you you're an idiot and then you do what they do and somebody else tells you that you're an idiot for doing what they do. So you just can't really win in these scenarios. Uh, but the best I can tell you is that I've, like I've said in other videos, you know, I've probably built over a hundred motors uh, in the last 10 years of all kinds of machines and all my rebuilds tend to last really long. So I think uh, I have a pretty solid process. And to be frank with you, if you build a motor correctly, chances are you're going to be okay. Uh, so uh, what I do, I do regular heat cycles. I do three 15 minute heat, heat cycles. Um, you can see on this motor, the hour meter here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It only says 0.2 hours. Uh, that's somewhat inaccurate because I had the OEM ignition on there and that was not hooked up to the hour meter. So I would say there's probably it's probably around a half an hour of runtime at this point. Um, so basically I will kick it over, get it idling nicely. And I don't like to leave it idle the entire time. I'll usually kind of like play with the throttle a little bit, kind of like you saw me doing in the beginning of this video, change up the RPM range and I'll give it a couple snaps here and there, but I don't like really lay on it or do any crazy long um, drags with the throttle or anything. And uh, yeah, so I do, I'll do that for 15 minutes. I'll let it cool down entirely for like 30 or 45 minutes, make sure the jug is nice and cool. And then I'll do that three times. And then usually the first ride, I don't go that hard. I think that it's almost like one of those things. It's like you put all this time and effort and money into something. It's, it, it can be scary to just go balls to the wall with something. I think, but, but I really do think by the time you do the heat cycles, you're good to go. And essentially what you're doing is you're, you're seating the piston rings and man, the opinions that I've gotten, you know, there's some guys that say straight out of the box, you should just go balls to the wall. And apparently, you know, I don't have racing experience, but apparently a lot of these guys at the track, these, these uh, factory teams and whatnot, there's some, play, some uh, teams that actually rebuild motors right at the track. And then they put the motors in these bikes and the guys are already running them on the track, straight out of the box, hitting the motocross track or uh, cross country, whatever it may be. You know, those guys are going hard as hell. So, I don't know, man. But then again, you know, you got to think those guys aren't going for longevity either. Those motors are constantly being rebuilt. So is that the best way to break it in? I don't know. Now guys, I'm also 
basically talking about two strokes for this video because four strokes you know i've heard there's different uh, procedures for that too cars as well you know people say like 500 miles or you know keeping it below half of the rpm range there's all kinds of different ranges diesels people say right out of the box uh, every single one of these across the board though there's controversial break-in methods but for this video i'm specifically speaking for two-stroke engines something else i wanted to make mention is that i think there is a difference too uh, with break-in procedures when it comes to how your cylinder is plated whether it's a nicocell plating or if it's a sleeved cylinder i do think um, i'm gonna say that the sleeved cylinders would need a, would probably benefit from the break-in a little bit more than a nicocell set setup now that being said i would still do the same break-in procedure whether it's a nicocell cylinder or a sleeved cylinder this is just my break-in procedure according to arlen at led uh, he likes to put, I think, two gallons through a tank, if I remember correctly, or uh, like a gas tank, like a tank basically, of just going easy on the machine before you start opening it up and going crazy. I don't think he does heat cycles. I could be wrong there. Uh, but so basically, like the general consensus I get is that you should go easy on the motor in the beginning. Beyond heat cycles and that kind of break in, after a first run, or after the heat cycles, and usually probably the first run, I'll dump the oil put fresh oil in there, make sure that we get all the assembly lube and stuff out of there. Uh, sometimes I'll even do the antifreeze like on a system. I actually already did uh, uh, an antifreeze flush, the coolant flush, because uh, with a new, everything's new here. So it's very possible that there's, you know, small metal shavings and stuff. I usually blow the systems out, but you never know if there's contaminants in there. So it's just a good idea to flush the system. And when the system was drained, I did pull off this temperature sensor and moved it from the bottom hose up to the top hose. Thanks to my subscriber, Brian. Appreciate that, brother. And then just look over the motor for loose bolts and whatnot. That's a pretty common occurrence there, you know, we, with all the vibrations and stuff, and stuff, especially with a two stroke. So that is pretty much my break-in procedure there. Uh, the oil and my gas, I usually run just slightly heavy. Right now it's 38 to one, which really isn't too heavy, but it is a little heavier than I normally run. Usually I run like 40 to one or 45 to one. So I'm running it a little bit heavier on the two stroke mix. And I usually have my jetting just a little bit on the fat side, just to make sure that everything is nice and lubricated. So that's what I do for my heat cycles. Like I said, three 15 minute cycles, make sure the motor cools down entirely in between and just, you know, stay with the quad, make sure you're playing with the, um, the throttle. Don't just let it idle the whole, the whole way through, try to get the RPM range. And uh, like I said, I usually have good compression and my motors usually last a pretty long time. So I think my method works really well. Is it the only way to do it? Absolutely not. Are there other successful methods? Definitely. Uh, this is just the way I do it. And like I said, the only reason I'm making this video is because I get, I've gotten so many DMs of people asking what my break-in process is. So that's uh, it's pretty straightforward, man. Now, as far as working on the quad today, um, the quad's done. I mean, I could actually hop on this thing and ride it right now. And it's really difficult not to do that. I want to do the first ride stuff with you guys though. So I, I haven't hopped on here. I will probably scoot around the yard after the heat cycles. I don't know if I'm gonna do that in this video. I think I'll do that uh, in a separate video this week just to make sure that the gearbox works and everything. I'm sure we're not gonna have any problems, but I am going to Silver Lake, uh, which is a 12 hour drive this weekend. That's gonna be its maiden voyage and I don't wanna get out there and have this damn thing not run. So I've kind of just been going over the machine. I replaced the bolts down here with these stainless steel Allen heads. I don't even think I had mentioned uh, these factory 43 Nerf bars came with regular hex heads and I wanted it to match you know, all these stainless steel bolts on the quad. So I got these stainless steel bolts, put those in. I did rebuild this front caliper. If you guys remember uh, when I went to bleed the brakes, this front one had a little bit of dribble, just a tiny little bit. And um, fun fact, you can use LTR 450 brake pistons in a 250R. This is the exact part number that I used. It came with two brand new pistons, all four seals. Pop them in there. They do look slightly different, but they're not different. Uh, or they fit. Well, they, I mean, they are different, but they fit perfectly fine. I measured them. Uh, they fit in there perfect. Blake's bread. They have bled and they have uh, nice pressure. So they should be good to go. So if you guys are looking to rebuild your brake pistons and you can't get Honda OEM parts, Suzuki LTR 450 front brakes, I believe all years will fit. I think it's all year 250R front brakes as well. But you got to keep in mind, whatever your 250R is, you might have 400EX brakes or 450R brakes if you bought the quad used because uh, but people switch them out a lot. Some other stuff I did, I put this chain on. It is nothing crazy, guys. It's a primary drive 520 O-ring chain. If it snaps, it doesn't even matter, man, because we got this DRW case saver. 
and it is indestructible. I'm confident in saying that. I've already snapped chains with DRW case savers. I'm not gonna crack this case. I also put the air filter back on. I think we are dialed in with the jetting decently. Uh, it smokes a good amount on idle, so it's possible that we're a little rich there, but it's nice and snappy. We'll see when I actually ride it, and the mid-range uh, seems to be pretty snappy too. Just from revving it, it feels and sounds really good. So I was comfortable putting that air filter back on. When I go out to Silver Lake, I'm gonna bring my jets and all the stuff to play with that. Uh, so, you know, that, that is subject to change. And I bought some paddles and I posted this on my story <laughs> on uh, Instagram. And I already got the keyboard warriors hitting me with, oh, Sedona Cyclone, dude, those are junk. And you're stupid. Well, people didn't say I was stupid, but <laughs> they implied that I was. So everybody was saying to get scat tracks. And dude, I know about scat tracks, but you know, I'm here in the Philadelphia area. We never ride sand. I have never ridden the sand dunes. So this will be my first time ever. And chances are, if I do go to the sand dunes again, it's probably not gonna be a frequent thing. Uh, scat tracks are expensive, dude. I was looking at them. They're like uh, the cheapest I could find were, they're like $200 a tire. So I don't really have $400 to just be throwing on the quad for one time use. Uh, but some of you guys will be happy to know that these Sedona Cyclones are actually for the Banshee. Not that the Banshee doesn't deserve better, but um, DBC Racing is lending me a set of wheels with scat track tires for the 250R. If they had the uh, Yamaha bolt pattern, they probably would lend them for the Banshee as well. But uh, just to make sure that the Banshee can at least, I think with regular tires, it'd be horrible in the sand. So the Cyclone should get me by. I also rebuilt the Kickstarter. If you guys saw from all the kicking, this thing was wiggling really bad. So it's pretty nice and tight now. Put an O-ring in there, repacked it with grease. And I also replaced this bolt uh, because that rubs on the inside. And it was actually, there was a flat spot on it from kicking it so damn hard. So I replaced the bolt, packed it, put a new O-ring on there and it is nice and smooth. It shouldn't rattle around. So yeah, everything is bolted down. We've torqued everything. Uh, the quad runs really great. We're pretty much ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna do one more heat cycle with this thing at the end of this video. And what I'm gonna be working on today is playing with the plastics. Uh, I have the rear plastics right here. I am gonna have to trim them. When you put them on there, they hit the heel guards and it just doesn't sit right. So I'm probably gonna have to trim these right about here. I'll make them look good. And uh, the front plastics, these fit on also, I already had them on there. They look freaking sick. And I will show you guys what they look like just with the uh, with no graphics. Got the quad tech hood we're gonna be putting on. This might take a little bit of custom fab work. From what I understand, these things, uh, sometimes they don't sit quite flush and we want this thing looking trick. So I'll probably be playing with that today. I'll get all the plastics on, I'll put the quad tech hood on. Uh, then we will do graphics and it's just gonna be kind of looking over everything, making sure everything is good but essentially the quad is done. Oh, and I can't forget this DRW skid plate. Got just laying on the floor here. I was measuring it up, measuring it up last night. I'm gonna have to put two little trenches in it to make room for our Nerf bar U-bolts up front, under here, which is no problem. This thing is a half an inch thick. So we'll be able to put little trenches and it's not, I, I doubt that will affect the strength of this thing at all and then we will be done. So yeah, guys, that is what's going on. Make sure to give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying these videos. That's what I do for heat cycles. I'm curious what you guys do for heat cycles too. Uh, so comment in the comment section below how you break your motor in or the methods that you've heard before. I'm sure people are interested to hear. Don't hit me too bad in the comments. I know there's gonna be people that tell me that the way that I do my engine break-ins is totally wrong and that I'm stupid and everything, but hey man, that's all right because we all are entitled to our opinions. So I will see you guys in the next video. I will be at Silver Lake, Michigan, the 25th and the 26th. So if you guys are gonna be out there, definitely hit me up. I'll have the 250R, I'll have the Maverick with me. I'll also have the Banshee, I'm gonna have everything. I'll be out there with DBC Racing. Mechanical Hulk is gonna be with me. So uh, we'll see, maybe he'll do a front roll again. Who the hell knows? But until the next one, guys, I love all you guys. I hope you guys are doing great. Rock on and peace out. All right, this will be the last heat cycle. This is kind of how I'll close out the video. It won't be the full 15 minutes, but at least we get to hear the quad run.